Hello and welcome to part two of my Lego Black Seas Barracuda review. In part one we took a look at the island with the wrecked ship and in part two today we are going to take a look at the ship as it should be. So this is the updated and remade Black Seas Barracuda which is uh, it's just fantastic. Um, I always intended to get this set pretty much for the ship rather than for the wreck and the island and I have to say I am not disappointed. Um, it's not perfect but then what Lego set ever really is 100% perfect. But the beauty of Lego is that I can customise and add my own bits, take bits away, and that is exactly what I intend to do. But before I do that, I thought I would show you a look around the ship and uh, just really take in all the amazing details. But first things first, I wanted to do a little comparison. And this is not the comparison with the original uh, Black Seas Barracuda, which I'm still hoping to be able to do. This is a comparison to something that uh, some of my viewers might be a little bit more familiar with if they haven't got this set. And that is, as you might see, just poking into the corner, my Hogwarts castle. So I'll just take a step back and you can see the size comparison. Now, that's impressive. The heights are almost the same. If the uh, Grand Staircase Tower wasn't sitting on its rockwork base, uh, the ship would easily overtop it. As it is, it's only a little bit shorter. Um, this isn't all my Hogwarts, obviously. This is just the Great Hall and the Grand Staircase Tower, along with the Courtyard and Boathouse. Um, purely because it wouldn't fit on this desk. I wouldn't be able to fit it. The ship is just too big. Um, obviously, my Hogwarts castle is not built at minifigure scale. It's sort of a minifigure compatible play scale, um, which I've just come up with um, Basically to save space. Um, think of it like the Star Wars ships, like the Millennium Falcon, um, like one of the most recent ones that came out in 2019, where it's big enough to put minifigures in it, but not so big that it's actually minifigure scale. And the ship just, I mean, the ship is bigger than the Great Hall. The actual body of the ship is bigger than the Great Hall. Um, and then with the masts, it's almost as tall as the Grand Staircase Tower, which is just absolutely phenomenal. Um, but <laughs> size is only one thing here. Um, what really matters is the detail and the build. So let's get into this and have a proper look. So I covered a few of the details of the ship in my uh, part one, but obviously that was when the ship was taken apart. And this is now it is all back together so I can have a good look at things uh, in the places that they should be. So why not start at the bow, which is the front of the ship. And just immediately, the details are just absolutely fantastic. Um, I think I said before, the stem is the front bit of the ship here with the figurehead, which looks absolutely incredible. Um, and then coming out all the way to the front with the bowsprit. Um, something I really like about this ship, actually, is the way in which the rigging is done. I mentioned that it's done with strings with the studs on the end, so there's no tying of knots uh, needed, which I find always really fiddly and... Uh, but it means that they can't be reused so well, um, whereas they managed to do everything here with the studded strings of two different lengths, I believe. So you've got some really long ones, like the one that goes from here on the bowsprit all the way up to there. And there's a similar thing happening on the main mast. And then some of these shorter strings, which just tie things together. Um, so everything just looks absolutely fantastic. In fact, the thing I like the most is the way in which the rigging goes all the way from the front, all the way up dips down and ends up at the sail at the back there. I think it just gives the ship a very complete look. Um, and actually it is a little bit structural in that it helps the uh, mast to stay <laughs> completely upright. Although that being said, the rigging actually does more than that because it's uh, solid pieces, which haven't appeared in dark tan before, interestingly, which I think is the perfect color for them. Swinging around to the side of the ship, I think the profile is absolutely fantastic. It's possibly a bit short for the type of ship that it should be, um, but overall the effect is still amazing. And considering how large this ship is, I don't believe that LEGO could have really made it any bigger. Um, I think that the uh, Imperial flagship, which came out a few years ago, will uh, be possibly longer and taller. I know there are some comparison videos out there on YouTube, um, but in terms of detail, I think this ship really just takes the cake. Um, I mentioned the Tumble Home, which is the 
angle of the sides just here, which you can see there. I think this is a first for a Lego ship and it looks absolutely amazing. Just every single detail that I look at every time on this ship uh, just amazes me. And uh, I, I can't really say enough about it. I feel like I'm going to be lost for words. Just that view looking forwards uh, from right at the stern looks just <laughs> absolutely incredible. Um, you'll notice I've not put any minifigures on here. Um, if you want to look at the minifigures in this set, then please look at the part one video that I did. Um, I've just left them off for now so we can get a good look at the set um, and all its details. I might put them on there at the end just to show you what it looks like with a fully populated ship, which does look really good. Um, it's interesting the way that the conversion happens. I mentioned in part one that I had done the conversion before, so I turned it from the island to the ship and then back to the island to review it, and now I've gone back to the ship again. It was a little bit easier the second time around, but you do have to be very careful and check all the details. Um, there are a number of different pieces like these barrels and boxes, um, which come from the island and need to be removed and then put in here. And if you're not careful, you can miss them and then think that you've run out um, or that pieces are missing when in actual fact, they're just hiding on the island. The stern of the ship is also fantastic. Um, I've said that word far too many times. The wheel is back in its proper place, along with a uh, parrot, one of two that are included in the set. And it just, just the detailing, like I mentioned, the way that the angles come together at the back here is amazing. Um, even down to the door at the back. So that was where the rudder was being used as a door on the island. And it just gets plugged with that piece there, including another gun port where you can put another cannon, although it's got a lattice inside there. But it, just attention to detail like that just makes it incredible. Um, I think it's fairly obvious that the ship was designed first and then they looked at how they could break it up and uh, turn it into the island. But having said that, neither one of the builds feels incomplete. Um, the only thing that does feel a little incomplete, I'll just swing around, excuse the uh, mess of parts, uh, is the island that's left. Now, this is what you get. It's not quite lined up properly. This is the island without the ship. So it's fine, it's fine. You can use it, you can position figures there. In fact, you also get all of these pieces left over. Excuse my uh, little mock-up of a cannon that I was trying to create. Um, so I think I might try and do something with these parts of the island, maybe reconfigure them into something that's a bit more uh, displayable by itself. As I think I mentioned before, my intention is to display the ship and modify it, so I will not be returning it to the island. So as far as I'm concerned, all of these pieces can be changed around. Who knows, I might use parts from my own collection to add perhaps another building here and then something in there. Um, look out for future updates. If there are, I'll try and link them. If not, then um, <laughs> I'm afraid I've either not got round to it or I've given up on it for the moment. But back to the ship, and here we are on the port side. Something that I didn't show when I originally reviewed the uh, shipwrecked version is the working anchor, which is just a brilliant bit of building. So it's just a standard modern Lego anchor um, and attached to, again, a studded string. And if you pull it, it comes out. But what's really impressive is what's called the capstan. You can just see it revolving there as I pull the string. And uh, it's just a brilliant bit of building. There's upside down building using the grill piece, which actually fits studs in it. Um, there's right way up building, there's use of all sorts of different parts. It's well worth looking at a speed build or some instructions because you can then do that and the anchor itself will just wind back in. Having said that, it is a fantastic build and I think for this ship, in this build, it's absolutely appropriate. I'm intending in my modifications to actually scrap the uh, capstan working around the mast because it's not completely prototypical and actually put it somewhere else I'm afraid so uh, you saw it here the first time and you won't see it again. Um, it's a great build though and I'll definitely be taking some cues from that when I build my own version. Um, I think just because of the amount of deck space it was sensible to have it going around the mast um, just because then it leaves a little bit more space available. Speaking of deck space you do get a decent amount. You can see there are three of those uh, large 8x8 modified plates with the grills, which look great, let a bit of light, uh, pun intended, let light into the uh, hole down below. And in fact, they are removable. Let me just try and remove that, yep, using the barrel as a handle. And you can see down into the ship. Uh, the ship's interior itself doesn't get modified, so that is still technically Jose's in. And that's something that I'll be uh, removing and fitting out a bit more appropriately 
when I do my modifications. Um, that's really the only piece you can open up super easily. Um, the front isn't openable at all from the deck. This part is, but you have to unclip the rigging here and on the other side and also detach the string at the top. And then you can actually take it out. Um, I won't do that just now because it's a bit of a faff. It's a shame that you can't get better access and that's something I'll be trying to improve on. But having said that, the fact that this is kind of two sets in one and they want it to be structurally stable and they want it to be buildable. Um, I think I can forgive them that, um, especially as this makes such a fantastic display piece. The ship does still come apart, obviously. Um, it's connected by ball and socket mixels joints at the front there, and then just held in place with some of these modified plates on top. And then the back is just held in place with Technic pins in those large hole segments. And then these modified tiles or plates with the two studs just keep it together. Again, that's something I might want to try and uh, improve on. I actually think that the ball and socket joint method works much better. Obviously it's not poseable or anything, it just gets locked together. So I might try and do a few more of those because the Technic pins, for whatever reason, don't seem to want to hold things together very well. Um, maybe just the particular parts in this occasion, but it's something that I'm going to try and replicate based on the method at the front. So there we have it. I really haven't got a lot more to say. Um, if you want any uh, more details about the individual sections, then please watch the part one video where I look at all of those. Um, and it really is an incredible set. I stand by what I said in the uh, first part. If you want either the ship or the island or both, go out and get yourself a copy. Um, it only came out last year, so I can't imagine it'll retire anytime soon. But I think idea sets do tend to have a shorter shelf life. So uh, if you're into ships, pirates, or just incredible Lego builds that are really fun to put together, then I would highly, highly recommend this. Um, this is part two. Hopefully there will be a part three, which I will try and link above if it does exist, um, which will be a comparison with the original Black Seas Barracuda. Now, by that time, I may have started to make some modifications. I'll try my best to keep the outside the same. Um, I think that original Black Seas Barracuda doesn't really have an interior in the main portion of the ship. I think it's just the captain's cabin. So I'll keep that the same. Um, and then just not show uh, whatever changes I've made in there. And then who knows, in the future there might be a uh, part four or a related video where I look at some of the improvements that I've made. Thank you very much for watching, and thank you for following me on this little diversion down on a set review. Um, so thank you to anyone who's new. Normally I do Harry Potter mock videos um, of my Hogwarts castle, as I showed at the beginning, and those will be uh, coming back. Have no fear, I'm going to be working on the Hufflepuff common room next. Um, so if that's what you'd expect normally and you've stuck with me for this, then thank you very much. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, then please leave a like down below. Always leave a comment if you want to, uh, just asking any questions or letting me you know your thoughts. And uh, if you do enjoy my videos and want to see more, then please subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time. Thanks.